Right, this is the moment of truth. Let's see how strong these joints came out. These epoxy and glass joints have had time to cure overnight, but it's still slightly tacky. It hasn't fully cured. It still needs quite a bit of heat. I'm going to have to take it out into the sun later, but it's a good time to trim off any excess. Epoxy in this state is called green. It's already hard enough to file and cut. It's a little gummy in order to, to sand it properly. I'll prefer leaving it a little bit longer before I sand it but for trimming and cutting. This is the best time you can see we've got a healthy bit of squeeze out, no air bubbles under or in the glass fabric, so that's good. Even though it's not very smooth, the wood faces are level, so we know we had proper alignment and we know that the pressure that we applied was sufficient. The ridges are simply because of folds in the plastic that didn't allow every last bit of excess to squeeze out. And we're going to clean all this off. Now, you can opt for hand sanding, but it is a really tedious job. It comes up the paper quite quickly. It's very hard to sand, you need to put incredible effort and pressure into it. My weapon of choice is of course this flappy disc on a high speed sander. This is a joint that was done using this method. It does help if the workpiece is not perfectly flat against the workbench. It allows it to give ever so slightly if you do accidentally add too much pressure. You really just want to hear the flappy disc sanding without allowing any pressure on the workpiece itself. Any excess pressure will simply cut straight through the glass and into the wood. So you do need very good control. And of course, with this being epoxy that hasn't fully cured yet, it's very important to wear some form of breathing apparatus. This epoxy dust is still very active and you definitely don't want to get it into your lungs. All my glass joints are fully cured now. So I had a few friends over and we stitched the panels back together very quickly. I've also cut two spruce stringers and just temporarily clamp them in place and with a combination of this temporary spreader the boat is actually very rigid and robust enough to handle, turn around, carry around makes it very easy to work with I can flip it over and work on the bottom if I need to to make sure that the key line is nice and fair this was the free edge of the top side and to join it to the wing of the aft panel I inserted another butt block glued to the aft panel and I allowed that to cure first and then during the stitching process the two were joined with some screws to make sure I don't end up with a kink at the join. I've also added these reinforcing pieces right at the end of the darts, the cutouts both inside and out just to make sure I don't get cracking in this area as the stresses tend to be quite high right at the join there. One of the disadvantages in working with such thin plywood is that you don't have a lot of stiffness along the free edges and there you can see a bit of sag between the stitches. Now it takes very little force to actually bring that back into place I don't need another stitch in there, so I'm using just normal masking tape and that gives me enough grip and stiffness along the edge 
for a very fair curve.